Today, I'm going to be making a stunning protea flower. It's intricate and beautiful, but it's a lot easier to do than you think. And you can try it at home using just a couple of products. Let me show you exactly how I made it. It's one of my all-time favorites, and I'm really proud of it. If you really like it, don't forget that the original is for sale now on my website. The last couple of weeks, we were doing some creatures, some very cute birds. So time for one of my favorites. A flower. I've got very nice premium canvas 30 by 30. I had a few requests for protea flower. We don't have them growing in the UK, but it's an amazing plant. So that's what I'm going to do today. And thank you so much for sending me some ideas. As usual, I am analyzing the flower, looking at various pictures. It's a South Africa's national flower. There are various colors. I do like those pink ones. Okay, so I'm going to sketch one and we'll transfer it onto canvas. I don't like sketching on the canvas because I really don't like rubbing off and changing. I would rather have a complete design and then I transfer it. That's just me. As you can see, I've been drawing happily on, what is it? This is actually baking paper. I find it very easy to transfer from something that's smooth and waxed. You can of course draw on tracing paper. If you want to trace an image, the royalty free image or your own photo, that's fine. I don't want it to move. So now I personally just use my nails, but I know it may sound a bit annoying. So you can use any edge like this and press it down. It transfers super, super quickly. My students love it. They think it's magical. Of course, you can go over with a pencil and that will give you the same result. I just can't be bothered. And I do like keeping my templates. I often share it with my patrons later. That's why I don't want it messed up. The funny thing is, when you press like this, you can partially see the lead that's leaving the paper and getting onto the canvas. Wow! Look at this! And this part was really light. I can go over some sections if I want to, but I'm pretty happy with this. Now I'm slightly torn. Should I use glue gun or should I use the paste? Okay, it's going to be the paste. I realized that I had some leftover paste from my previous paintings. So these were the little cones I made and filled them up with my paste. This is the first time I am putting the paste on a completely unprepared background. There's nothing on the background because I've got some plans. And of course I haven't tested it first, so you'll see me either succeeding or changing my mind and adapting. So let's cut the ending. I'm going to spread it with some water. Shape it the way I want it. At the moment I am testing how soft this is. So I think I am going to do the ones behind. I'm not doing the outlines this time because I want them to be kind of really thickish. I'm doing all the outside ones now. This is, this is actually the leaf, part of the leaf, and I planned it folded, so this section is quite thick. I know I said it many times, but this is so much fun working with the paste. I, I know that they are ready-made paste, texture paste, there's so many on the market. I like making my own, you know, and this is also on the budget. And it doesn't take long. If you think it's very hard, it's it's super, super therapeutic. If you can't draw, there are always some people uh, that will say, no, I can't draw at all. This, you can trace your outline and basically fill it up now. Relax. For me, the best thing about art, apart from expressing my ideas, would be the peaceful, quiet enjoyment. Okay, ta-da! I'm leaving it, leaving it to dry. And then we'll be back with the mid part. And then I'll have to ooh, think what kind of colors I want. How do I want to do the background? I knew that wouldn't be enough. So I am going to mix some more. Those of you who don't know what I used in my paste, you see me 
making it now. All purpose filler. Really like it. I had a question once whether, you know, how long will it last? Uh, how durable it is. It's actually very durable as it's used for building and, you know, fixing walls. I was reading some specifications and it's long lasting. Of course, I haven't tested it for 50 years yet, but there should be no problem. And of course, the whole work will be covered with acrylic paint and then protected with a couple of layers of varnish. So I don't have any doubts that it's going to be very long lasting. I sometimes mix it with just acrylic paint, uh, but I'm going to add gesso. This is super heavy gesso by Liquitex. Really like this one. Okay, that's definitely plenty. I am going to use a smaller nozzle, well, let's call it a nozzle, for those parts, and then something thicker for the big chunky petals. Look at the lovely consistency. I could use a bag, a plastic bag, that would be fine, but what works best for me is actually cellophane and just make a little tube. Sellotape. As I mentioned, I did use various bags and that was fine as well. This is easier to hold. It's not so squashable. I think you can control it more this way. All right, let me put it all in. It's important not to have any lumps because they will block your nozzle. Cutting a small amount. Of course, I don't want them to look like this. I want them rather flat. Actually, almost completely flat. I think that will look more natural, you know? And then I can add some more in between. I think that's probably the best idea, yeah? And I want to make it kind of look a bit more, I wanted to say silky, because the mid sections are very interesting. No worries if this is messed up at the moment, it's going to be fine. And then the brush marks will give us the interesting texture. Time for the bigger ones. I'm really enjoying the fact that I'm trying to recreate the whole petal, not just the outlines like with the previous paintings. It's a bit more challenging, but I think the effect will be very pleasing. Final petals. So we've got a few layers now. To be honest, I am kind of improvising here, some of them. If it's too much, I can take it off. And a few more. And then I'll come back when I did the stem. All the petals. So we're basically left with this section. And then we'll just proceed with the stem. Oh, by the way, I saw today the first 3D blue flower. A picture sent me by one of my lovely followers on Instagram. Very often when I see just a small picture, I think, oh, that's my work. And it's not. The one thing that's really important and... Thank you very much for everybody who does it. If you share your work on social media and you are following my tutorial, it would be fantastic if you could mention your source of inspiration. I think it's a lovely thing to do. Because, well, you all know how much work it goes into producing a tutorial. All of you who try to do it as well. And for me, the hardest part of all, it's not just hard work you know making it and then super hard work putting the whole video together but for me the hardest thing is coming up with the idea that people would, would be interested in especially that I I always like trying new things I suppose I easily get bored you know if I had to repeat something and so now I've got the whole collection of those texture flowers. They've definitely been recently my absolute favorite series. They are all on my website by the way and this one will be as well if you are interested in owning the original and there will be a big discount if you purchase more than one. Before I decide on the 
proper colours for the flower, I'm going to paint everything white as a protective base, just normal titanium white. Uh, you can also spray paint it if you wish. It's all white now and I made up my mind about colours. So first of all, this. You think it's white? Uh, kind of. With a hint of brown and a hint of yellow. But a really, really small amount. I am trying to make it really runny. I'll tell you what's inside, but this is water. I put one part of paint to one part of Floetrol and one part of water with PVA glue. And if it's still too thick, and in this case I want it super runny, I add water. You can see how it runs off this thick. That's a very small build up. Perhaps it's still too big. Water comes in. And now it's really runny. But it's an uninterrupted stream. Very important. So all the paints are mixed the same. So we've got this off-white, let's call it. I was making um, a flamingo last week and if you haven't seen it, please do watch. It was so much fun and I love the colours. So I do have some leftover paint from the flamingo. I mixed it myself and I made it lighter with white. So I put this. And this is a hint of green and a brown in white. And one more, just a darker variation of this one. So a bit of brown and a bit of yellow with less white than here. So these are the colours and I am going to use, I haven't used it for quite some time so I miss it, my friend the hairdryer. There it is, my crazy contraption. I promised myself to buy a smaller hairdryer but I just like it too much. Please don't do it, it's actually dangerous, it gets hot and you can cut yourself. Time to spread the colours and I want to do it quickly. So first of all, off-white. Now hopefully you can see the difference that it's not really white. Let me spread it a bit. If I drop some paint, I will touch the edges with it. I usually do. In my imagination, it looked good. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, we've got now, it's probably too much of this. I'll put more of the beigey cream. Oh my goodness, okay, I am now a bit anxious. How about just a drop of deeper color? Oh, all right. Let's do it. You've never seen me doing anything like it, so on a 3D paste. I'm trying to take most of it up. Oh, it's a beautiful colour. I am in love. I'm leaving it and I am hoping that it's going to be amazing. Oh, sorry. I'm just so happy. I am so happy with the outcome. And I am hoping, I'm so hoping that it won't affect my 3D elements. These colours are so seriously beautiful. Oh, I'm, I'm speechless. Look at the background. Soft kind of, a little bit even shiny. So I really don't want to kill it now, but I do want to add some shadows. I've been deliberating which colours to use. I've got a little bit of amaranth red, pink blush, halo green, and a little bit of burnt amber. I want to create some shadows around the leaves. So I'm trying to mix the same colour and then making it darker with black, if that makes sense. Let's see how dark it is. Oh, it's really dark. I don't know if I want it so dark. I feel like I'm going to be super fussy now because, as I said, I really like it. So one thing I will be using for sure, it's a wet baby wipe. That's better. I, I really want it to match the background, so muted green, that's the color. 
I don't really want to cover all the leaves with deep green values. I think it will not look too good. And now time to get some shadows between the petals. For this I am going to use a little bit of pink blush. This beautiful metallic flamingo, I call it flamingo color, but it's a pearl amaranth red. Oh yeah, that's a perfect shadow color. Sometimes I just do things by, I think I by accident, come across something I'm happy with. Really, really love those subtle colors. I've decided to make the Protea more like a white one or creamy one instead of those deep darker ones. I'll add a little bit of white later on, but I do want some shadows in between those, especially towards the top. What if I just use my finger? As this is all raised surface. You can even touch some of the petals, I suppose. Too much. I am pleased with this one. I definitely am. Well, there we are. I hope you enjoyed this one and please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you would like more exclusive content, don't forget that you can watch extended versions of each week's tutorial on my Patreon and support my channel from just $2 a month. The original is also for sale now on my website. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all at the premiere of my new video next Saturday. Bye bye!